softball, then you are going to love the Fast Pitch TV show. We're bringing you more interviews, more videos, and more product reviews than anyone else on the planet. Sit back and get ready. Here's the Fast Pitch TV show. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Fast Pitch TV Show. Now, if you found our show on Facebook, YouTube, or, or any other video sharing site, please check out our website at www.fastpitch.tv. It's the place to find this video's channel and the place to find all of our other softball channels, which this time I think are seven. That's right, we have seven channels of softball videos at our network at fastpitch.tv. Now last month I was in Las Vegas for the NFCA convention. In case you're not familiar with the NFCA, that stands for the National Fast Pitch Coaches Association. It was a great convention held by a great association. You really need to check out their website at nfca.org. Now one morning I went to a breakfast held by the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Now, during this breakfast, three-time Olympian Leah O'Brien Amico was speaking. Now, in this week's episode, I'm going to bring you her session during the, the uh, breakfast right after a word from our sponsor. Do you need a softball bat? Do you want to save $30? Softballjunk.com is offering an additional $30 discount off the price of all non-sale softball bats on their website. That's right, $30. So the next time you buy a bat, go to softballjunk.com and enter the code FPTV30 during checkout. And wham, you just put a cool $30 in your pocket. I just have the ultimate pleasure of introducing one of the most amazing women and a servant of the Lord. Uh, let's give a huge round of applause for three-time Olympian, NCAA All-American, NCAA Division I champion, the one, the only, Leah O'Brien Amico! being 21 on that first Olympic team and thought, you know, she's 34 and, you know, she's our leader, but if we wake up at like 4 a.m. to have to take a flight and me and Laura Berg and we're just like, oh, we're tired, but we're young, you know, and Dot be like, let's go! <laughs> like, how does she have that energy? <laughs> I don't know. Lord, yes, God definitely gave it to you. Um, first of all, thank you for all of you coming just early in the morning. I know it's early for me, so probably early for a lot of you, but thank you for what you do for the lives that you are touching every single day. As a coach, um, you know, I, I know for me, uh, being able to get there, I'm so thankful for all my teammates, but really it was my coaches that led the way. And I'm so thankful um, for their example, not only teaching me the skill, but really, I was very, very blessed to have coaches that were positive, were encouraging, um, were those that helped me to be a better person and not just an athlete. So I know God looked out for me in that way. I was very, very fortunate as well as um, being able to know a lot of you as well in this room and maybe not play with you, but um, just the respect that I had. I thank you. And, you know, as I was thinking about what to talk about, I feel like God um, just gave me that, that reminder of just the leaders that we are. Um, I just was listening, I drove yesterday down and was listening to a um, CD by Beth Moore and um, it was definitely all about, about leadership and she said, do, you know, do you boss or do you lead? You know, are you a boss or a leader? Because they're different. And um, I think what's so important is when we see good leadership, um, one of the things that stood out was she was talking about the influence that you have. And I believe probably everybody influences in some in bad ways, but really the power of influence. and. And she said, they said in the middle, she read it out of a book, but in the middle of that, influence is the word flu. And it's contagious. And influence, you know, when we influence others, they're going to catch what we're giving. And that can look a lot of different ways. And I just think it's a good reminder um, to keep that focus. And, and I, when I get chances to speak, I think because of my personality and, um, you know, I get real passion, passionate. And I think when you're passionate, for me, that probably overcame some things that I didn't have in the talent area. I played with superstars, and I always tell everybody I was never the fastest, I was never the strongest. I, I pitched, but I you know, couldn't throw like the best of the best, and, and yet I feel like the passion that God allowed me to have for something helped me to constantly pursue. And one of the things I'll tell people is pursue your passion. Like I believe that if you go after that passion, like I believe God gives us it. But I was reading this book, and I don't know how many of you have read this book, Lead for God's Sake. Has anybody in here read? read it. Okay, a couple people. Someone gave it um, with FCI. I did an event a couple weeks ago and I read it. It's a very quick read. I read it on my plane flight home from South Carolina. 
And um, there were a couple things I, I want to point out. Um, first of all, as I was reading this, they talked about not just going after your passions, because going after your passions, let's say coaching is your passion, and you believe God gave you this passion to coach. Well, it's not enough to pursue this coaching and to be the best coach I can be and to you know, win as many games as I can, but instead to pursue God's purpose for you in his life, and he will give you those passions and make it all line up. And I, be passionate about pursuing God's purpose for you. And to me, that just, I don't know, it stood out to me because, again, I'm big on passion, but, yeah, that, that makes that sense of if I am passionate about pursuing God's purpose, then all those other things line up. You become that coach that God has wanted you to be. You become that instructor, that person who influences, that example to these students that you are getting that have every kind of background you can imagine. And some of you, and especially if you've been coaching a lot, a lot of years, you know, I just think of the few years I played and the teammates that I had and some of the things we dealt with in those four short years, quick years, um, and the different things that, that we went through. But um, I wanted, as I was reading out, just a couple points I wanted to make out. Recently I was reading Esther again, and um, Esther was someone who, um, was a beautiful young woman and she ended up finding herself uh, as queen um, with King Xerxes because basically his wife completely um, dishonored him and got kicked out and so he wanted to find a new wife and he fell in love with Esther of her beauty and um, he ends up, she ends up getting this royal position and um, as she's in this position the next guy in command is Haman and he basically wants to destroy all the Jews, he hates them, he and her cousin Mordecai um, was her mentor, he helped raise her, uh, but he loved the Lord and he taught her the ways of the Lord. And basically he ends up letting her know, for those of you who don't know the story, letting her know that they, they sent out this decree to destroy their, their people. And she's one of them, but the king didn't know that she was Jewish. And, um, and most of us know uh, the verse that um, is in chapter 4, and at this point, she needs to approach the king in order to try to save her people. But she's an unlikely person because literally even the queen could not approach the king unless he called for her and she could lose her life over it. But she had to decide her people could be destroyed and, you know, but she needs to decide, is it worth the risk? Is it worth it? And so Mordecai, you know, all the people have been praying and, and so this is what when she basically said he hasn't summoned me like I could get killed for this and then this is what a lot of us have heard these this verse but he's in, in chapter 4 um, verse 14 he said if you remain silent at this time relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place but you and your father's family will perish and who knows but that you have come to a royal position for such a time as this and I think a lot of us have heard that for such a time as this and I do believe that every coach for all of you, some that don't realize that God has given them that position yet, but every coach, and especially in the times we're living in right now, I mean, there is a battle, there is a war raging all against us. And God has placed all of you in this position for such a time as this. Many of you know that. You know your coaching because he's called you to that. I coached for two years, a couple years back in high school, and God made it clear, like, it is not working with my three boys at home. My husband's like, I'm going to lose my job. you got to stop coaching. And so that wasn't my calling at that time. But many of you know you've been called to this position. But so a couple points I want to make out because what ends up happening, for those of you that might not know or maybe remember, but she basically starts praying and fasting, asks everyone around her to do the same. And she takes this chance. And she pretty much gets to the point where, all right, I'm going to step out and I'm, gonna, I'm willing to sacrifice. If I perish, I perish. Basically, I know the consequences, but literally there's so much at stake. My people, my people could perish and I might perish. Right? I mean, she was probably pretty safe. She was the king's wife and she probably could have found a way to protect herself. But when I was reading it, it just reminded me that she basically, there was a higher purpose and a higher calling and a higher God that she served. And she needed to trust in him. What is your plan? But these are your people. And I'm going to stand out. And I know um, the, the, the few points I want to make real quick, I, I kind of were, made the word map. So a couple things that just, you know how like you're reading the word? I love the word of God. It's living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. It, it's constantly, you could read it ten times. And the tenth time, this something jumped out at you because of what you're going through or maybe you didn't see it before. 
God is so good. So as I was reading it this time, one of the things for me, the first one was um, for M, mentoring. Like, I think that it's so important. See, she was in this position, but, but Mordecai had been someone who always poured into her, and now she's in this position. But he still, in a sense, was giving her these messages, and even though she was in this highest position, in a sense, he was still instructing and helping and encouraging in the path that God would want. And I just want to say to you, coaches, some of you might have that. You might have mentors. Some of you maybe never have, and you're like, what does that even mean? But God wants people to pour into you so that you can then pour into other people. He wants us. You might be in this high position, but he still wants you to be able to have people point at you. And just know that FCA Softball is there. If you don't have that around you, if you don't have that at a local church, FCA Softball is here to do that, to pray for you, to encourage you, to give you those verses, to give you those devotions. They will definitely do that. But mentoring, I believe, is so important for all of us. We all need that. Um, the second one is A. Um, she was aware of her circumstances. So even though she's in this high position, she's seeing what's going on around her, beneath her. And you guys as coaches, you know. I, this is nothing you guys don't know or haven't heard, but hopefully it's just a reminder and encouragement that all of us athletes that, and you, many of you were athletes, so you know this as well, but when you had those coaches that you knew cared more about you as a person, and as a player that your whole purpose wasn't wrapped in because their view of you wasn't all about that performance. It's just, there's such a comfort there and there's a level of just security and, um, and when, you know, when you know what's going on in their lives, just, hey, how's your mom, how's your dad? And many of you last night were praying for um, family members of athletes that you guys have. That is so powerful. That's something they're never gonna forget even if some, someone said their mom, one of their athletes' moms passed away. And that's something that's always with them is how you were, were with them when that was happening. So being aware of the circumstances, praying and fasting as to how God would use her. Um, that's so important for all of us. We talked about that as last night as well. Some of us got together and they were just talking about how do you find that quiet time? But being able to spend that time because before she didn't just rush into the king, this is the right thing to do, but instead she got away with God. And we saw Jesus do that. And I am so guilty. I have three little boys and I cannot wake up early. <laughs> and so I have to find my different times. But you know what? God thankfully is so loving to all of us that when you get back there, he just says, I miss you. He doesn't say, why aren't you here with me? You know, you need to spend more time. I did, you know, I think he allows us to be the one to fill up room, but then he says, I love you, and I just want to speak into your life. So that prayer, and then the last thing was that she stepped out in faith, and, and because of that, she literally saw God do more than she ever could have done. That just being that queen and being that example and having her high position and her protection, instead, she literally saw God not only protect her people, but literally avenge Haman who was trying to destroy all of them in his own way. And God is so much bigger, and I just want to encourage all of you that as you are that example, you know, here's the thing, we all have different personalities, but as God works in us, he's going to be the one, the Holy Spirit's going to be the one that directs us to say, okay, you can approach this girl right now, she needs this, or hey, ask this girl if you can pray for her right now. And we need to make sure, some of you might have more freedom in that, others might be a little more like, I could not do that. But just know that God, God will direct and he's going to take care of it because he's the one who's working on their hearts anyways. He's the one that is, is really doing it. Um, I wanted, I, I, it was interesting, I was looking um, at a couple quotes. Coach Candrea, who I played for at Arizona as well as um, on the Olympic team, there was an interview I found with him and I thought it was interesting because you know as an athlete we view our coaches a certain way and we know what we're getting from them but it's kind of interesting to hear the coach say their perspective of what they're trying to give out. So um, there are a couple things I want to read. He was talking about kind of about his coaching philosophy and um, he kind of said in the beginning of his career he was much more result oriented but he said it's a terrible thing to say but it's probably true that after you won that first or that second one then you become a better coach because you become more well rounded. And, and what he's kind of saying is, is that the pressure almost of like, okay, I did it. Okay, wait, that doesn't define who I am. That doesn't, you know, everyone else puts that pressure on us. The world puts that pressure on us. But, but you know what? That's not what life is all about. And he said, you know, I see a lot of coaches that are so obsessed with winning that first one. They tend to lose track of the big picture. Um, you become more comfortable with yourself once you've under, you know, once you've gone through it. And he said, uh, you're not going to jeopardize anything for the end result when you pay more attention to the process. Um, he said also that 
because of that and through that time as probably wisdom we all get older and get a little more wisdom right that um, he started enjoying the kids more enjoying the moment having fun and keeping a balance and then he went on to talk about his family and you know Jenny Dalton is here and we both played for coach Kendra at Arizona and um, and I know a lot of you coach and you have kids and and you know your wives or husbands and you're <coughs> sacrificing a lot and um, and we we knew that our coach he was there for us and he spent a lot of time but we also know he had two kids at home that that weren't getting that time and that was a choice that he made at that time but I do believe that as time went on, I think there were things that he couldn't get back. And, and again, God knows all of us. I think if we're in this profession, he's going to take care of you, your situation, your kids, and know how it fits and how it works. Um, but I think this is really cool because Patty Gass is back there. And um, he, this is what he said. He said, um, you, know, you need to do some soul searching and see why you're really in this game. He said, you see Oklahoma winning it in 2001. He said, I called Patty. And I said, the one thing that's probably more touching to me than anything else was you hugging your husband and your two kids right there because I know what you've gone through. He said, I think you'll be a better coach because what you con or, uh, because that you conquered that moment. Now you've got to realize this is where it begins. This, this isn't the end of it. And I just thought it was powerful that just, I believe God helps all of us to just realize that bigger picture when, when we kind of maybe step back for a second. And, um, and that's, that's what this is about, that reminder of, the purpose behind this because you guys know you're out there you're in the grind you've got all these different things there's no time for anything um but just just that there is a bigger purpose behind all that i want to just read a couple of these um a couple of these quotes real quick from this book because i thought it was very powerful it's a really good book i think that you guys should should get leave for god's sake is what it's called okay um let's see, 212 um, he said, okay, so they're talking about this guy, and it's a story set up as a parable. So one guy's a coach, and he basically needs to keep winning because he's been really, really successful. So he needs to stay at the top, but he doesn't, never has time to play with his son because he's got to watch film, and he's got to stay there. And, and so he's constantly like, no, I have to. And then there's, there's this janitor who basically starts helping him realize what life is all about. So at the very end, um, they're talking about what he, this guy, this janitor who started impacting all these people's lives, um, were was like and then someone says okay well then what do we need to all quit should we all quit coaching and then go be pastors we have to all go just go be missionaries in order to serve God then is that what it is and this is what he said he said no I just think we need to quit our selfish pursuits and to, to learn to pursue him first um, you know the Bible says seek first the kingdom of heaven all these things shall be added unto you um, we have to seek him first and seeking him is making the choice to love him love others and to allow him to love us while we strive to be the best we can be. And so basically this will help us to, to love, how to be those examples, to love the students and the athletes that we have. Um, and then this is, what, this is what I think is for all of you guys, just a word of it, hopefully encouragement <coughs> to all of you. We are called to leadership because we are called to influence others in the right ways and for the right reasons. Genuinely loving those God has placed in our life's path is the starting point of that influence. And to that, a commitment to using every ability God has given us to be the best that we can be, regardless of what we do or where we are. And you have a recipe for leadership success. And I just thought that was that was very powerful. Um, all of you are leading by example. Your athletes are catching it. They are. They are. I think of my coaches, and I'm telling you, it's impacted the rest of who I am today. Absolutely, um, the coaches. And just this morning, to finish up, as I was. Um, just praying a little bit, I felt like God was reminding me because I was, you know, I have, I have three little boys and they are not easy. <laughs> Winning three gold medals is way easier than raising my boys. <laughs> way easier. And, uh, <laughs> and so, you know, I fail and God just <laughs> reminds me how much I need him. And, um, and so <laughs> I, uh, we were doing a little study the day of the fruit of the spirit and I cut out like little pictures of fruit and they're not wanting to listen, and I'm yelling, you need to have the fruit of the Spirit! <laughs> you know? so, that doesn't really work out. <laughs> not peace and calm and gentle and kind. But um, <laughs> God just was reminding me that it's like, if I want the fruit of the Spirit, I need to be eating this. I need to be taking this in because I can look at fruit all I want and want that strawberry and want that apple and know that it will benefit me greatly. But if I don't eat of it, it's not going to do anything for me. Once I eat of it, it helps me. 
And, and, and God just reminds me, you know what, just keep coming to me and I will help you. But if you don't come to me and you just talk about it, it's not going to happen. So thank you all for what you do. God bless you. And just know that you're making an eternal impact and there is such a bigger purpose. And, and I'm thankful to just be in this little small, small softball world with all of you. Thank you. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed uh, Leah's talk. Now, if you want to find out more about the FCA, just go to fcasoftball.com. Now it's time for our new segment of the Fast Pitch TV show. It's time for the Win Some Softball Stuff contest. And on this month's contest, we're giving away a 33-inch Drop 9 Bruin Fast Pitch Bat by Combat. You can find out more about this bat at CombatSoftball.com. This bat sells for $279.99. Now let's, let's watch as Amanda explains how you can win the, this bat. The Win Some Softball Stuff competition And all you softball fans better listen Since you're listening to the show You should comment on this video The Win Some Softball Stuff competition I'm here to explain how to enter the contest. First, become a fan of the Fast Pitch TV show on Facebook. Simply go to facebook.com slash fastpitchtv and become a fan of the show. Second, go to your Facebook page and post, I'm trying to win a contest at www.fastpitch.tv. Step three, go to our website at www.fastpitch.tv, find this episode of the Fast Pitch TV show, and leave a comment. You can say, I love the show, or I want to win the contest, or whatever you want. Then Gary will choose a winner from all of the entries. That's it. That's the three steps to enter the Win Some Softball Stuff contest. The Win Some Softball Stuff competition. And all you softball fans better listen Since you're listening to the show You should comment on this video The Win Some Softball Stuff competition Now I will announce the winner on episode 188 So that's next week's episode So make sure you enter for your chance to win A brand new Bruin Softball Bat from CombatSoftball.com Now if you have an iPhone, an iPad, or an Android phone You need to get the Fast Pitch TV Show app today Just go to your phone's app store Search Softball and you'll find it, I promise you And like I said, don't forget to check out all of our softball channels On our website at FastPitch.tv It's not FastPitchTV.com, just FastPitch.tv Dot TV. Well, that's all for today's show. Goodbye, and thanks for watching. This show is a member of the Fast Pitch TV Network.